Hey everyone, it's Zach Wright with IMEO Company, Improving Management, Employees, and Organizations. Today, we're going to be talking about how to plan and prepare your business for the upcoming year. Now, this says 2022. This really applies to any year that you want to or you should be doing for planning. Now, we're coming up on the end of Q4, going right into the new year. So this is the perfect time to start this mindset and this framework that we're going to go through today. Now, as we go through this presentation, what I want you to think about is this Benjamin Franklin quote, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Now, I know that's kind of cliche, but it's actually true. If you don't prepare, then you're not going to be prepared for what could happen. Whenever you're planning, you're not always just thinking about what it is that you want to happen. You're planning for anything that could happen as well. If you have a large organization, they're going to have a risk management department, most likely. And the entire idea of that is to plan for any type of risk that could come up in that organization and how to avoid that, as well as Another department, which is business continuity. If there is something bad that happens, how do you plan to continue that business? Like if there's a disaster or if there's something that shuts down in the tech industry and you can't do your work on the computer, how do you overcome that? The goal with that is to reduce the amount of time to get back up and running. But if you don't plan for any of that, then you're going to be reacting rather than being proactive. So what I want you to ask yourself whenever you're thinking about planning is what are the goals of the company? What is it that we are trying to achieve in 2022? Now you want to think long-term, but you also want to think what are the actionable items that I have to do? And the way that we do it is we really identify the areas of focus. We call these the top pillars, right? So as we were doing our business business audit for IMEO, we were looking at, okay, what were the top areas that our customers or our clients talked about really liking, really seeing the most benefit out of during this past year? And whenever we came to that conclusion, it was objectives and key results. And at the towards the end of this video, you'll actually see how we kind of implement that into your organization. So what we're focusing on is anything that has to do with objectives and key results or prioritizing and really executing and creating that focus and alignment that you need for your company to not be as distracted and to execute on what is needed. So the other part is to reflect on the past and acknowledge your gaps. And what I mean by that is just what I mentioned when we did our business audit. What was it that we did really well? What was it that we didn't do really well? You know, and I would say for IMEO, it was probably crowdsourcing in the sense of is what we're working on actually beneficial to the client or the future client? Is it going to bring in more clients and can we have a bigger impact because that's the main thing that we're looking for how can we impact the audience how can we impact our clients for them to be successful and then acknowledge your gaps and really what we're looking for here is to be honest and we had to do that whenever we realized that objectives and key results was the area that we needed to focus on and the tough part was we had all these assets that they're not going to go to the wayside or they're not going to be wasted. We're still going to use them, but we have to steer in this direction to be fully focused, to really bring that full impact and to really create an audience that we can target and see better results. And then once you acknowledge that bullet point, reflect on the past and acknowledge your gaps, you build a plan around closing that gap. So from where you are now to reaching your company's mission, and we talk about reverse engineering and we'll get into that. But if we look at this next slide here, what we're looking at is pretty much the very high level overview of what we want you to do to plan for 2022. We want you to set your goal. 
right? Again, look at your mission, look at your vision, look at your core values. What is it that you're trying to accomplish as a company? Start at the top, not at the top as far as leadership or executives, but as, at the top of what you are truly trying to accomplish as a company. And then break that down into a plan. And we're going to go into how we use Asana. But before we even do that, we're going to go into how to generate focus with those pillars. So the next part is to get to work, which really means to execute. So how do you execute, especially if you're a solopreneur, because I've talked to a lot of clients where they get distracted or it's hard for them to focus on what needs to be executed because they have all these ideas. So how do you do that? How do you stick to it? The way that you stick to it is by leveraging tools that can hold you accountable in the sense of you set this timeline and you work towards that timeline or by working with a business coach that holds you accountable to those timelines. Because it's easy to tell yourself, hey, I want to finish this by December 31st. And then December 31st comes up and you just move it. It's easy to do that if you're on your own, but if you're working with a business coach, they're going to have pushback, or at least a good business coach. And then you're going to feel successful because you reached your goal, right? So you can smile at the end of the day and see that you have reached new heights, right? But let's take a look at what this really looks like. So if we can create our pillars, right? So if our mission is to build a world where organizations operate effectively and treat others appropriately, that's our North Star. And then we have a pillar, which is objectives and key results. And then we might have a pillar that would be educate people on objectives and key results. And then the third pillar might be, what are the benefits of objectives and key results, right? All those are going to be adding up to the North Star. And each action plan or idea underneath the pillar, as we can see these little uh, balls here, orange balls that are, that are meant to represent task, those tasks are going to contribute to that pillar, whichever one it is that you're looking at or working towards. But then you see that they're all combined together as well. So pillar one, pillar two, and pillar three go together to reach that North Star. And that's important because if you don't take the time to, to really think strategically about how each part of your business is adding up to reach the ultimate mission and go towards that North Star, then you're easily distracted. And that's where these little icons here, these squiggly lines, they're bouncing off because what you're able to do is say no to something, right? And we'll get into that a little bit deeper. But basically here, you're having your pillars be broken down into actual actionable items that you that you focus on completing and executing. And then once you complete that, that goes into the mission and you made it a little bit further. Now you might be asking, how can I actually do this where it makes sense for me? So what we do at, a, at IMEO is we leverage Asana, and Asana is a project management tool. Now, I'm a solopreneur. Luckily, I'm very self-disciplined, so if I put a timeline on here, I'm going to stick to it. But you can see here that this is our go-to-market action for IMEO. And you can see some of these things that are in here. So in queue, that means that we're definitely going to do that. We're going to optimize our marketing efforts, which goes back to OKRs, right? Because now that we know that we're going to be focused fully on OKRs, we can start to target people specifically who leverage OKRs. So it might be people management. It might be people ops. We have those ideal customer profiles already. So that's going to help us do that. So now the next step is to work with a marketing agency or learn more about marketing, right? That's going to be something that we have to decide in Q1. That's one of our plans. And then also the new client process onboarding. We want to continue to improve the customer experience whenever they work with IMEO. And then we also have all these different things that 
matches up to what we're trying to do. So if we go back to the pillars ex example, then what I might be doing is creating the entire onboarding package for someone who buys the OKR coaching package, right? And then we break it down even further, so on and so forth. But now, kind of going outside of Asana, I want to go back into how to build focus and alignment with OKRs, right? So if you have your objective, that's going to be the what. So that's what you're really talking about. What is it that you're trying to achieve in 2022? And then what we like to do is break them down into quarterly OKRs, objectives and key results. Objective is the what, the key result is the how. So whenever we're thinking about the high level stuff, we're looking at, okay, does or does what I have on this objective make sense as reaching our North Star? If it does, then good. We're creating alignment to that goal. Is it clearly defined? So you don't want a gray area. You, you want to be able to acknowledge this specifically where you're able to hand this off to someone else, maybe a team member, and they can understand, okay, this is exactly what I have to accomplish in Q1 of 2021. And the other part of this is the quote that I have here, knowing what to say no to is just as important as knowing what to do, right? Because if you know what to say no to, then you're able to be focused. You're able to, and actually you can use these OKRs as accountability pieces. And if somebody calls you out or tries to make you feel bad for saying no to something, you can point back to the OKRs, right? So the last part here is the purpose. And this is why I like OKRs so much. So at IMEO, we help you create cascading OKRs. And what that really means is that every single objective and key result is tied to another objective and key result that ultimately goes up to the mission of the company, the company's OKRs, right? And what that does is it creates meaningfulness. And if you think about a job that you have, each time that you go to work, you want to know is what you are doing that day purposeful? Does it matter? Is it meaningful? And if you're able to answer that, you can tell just from running an, an experiment on yourself how much better you do at that position, right? So that's really what we're trying to do whenever we're planning for 2022 or whatever year it is that, you're, that you might be watching this video. And it's creating that alignment for all of us to work towards one goal, right? And that's ultimately moving the needle forward to the company vision and mission. And I think one of the best ways to explain this is to talk about the bowling alley example that I like to bring up. So whenever you're at a bowling alley, and you can see this picture here if you're not familiar with bowling. So you have a ball, you have a lane, and then you have pins down at the end. Your goal is to take the ball and hit that and knock down all the pins, right? So the way that I look at this in comparison to running a business is you start with the end in sight. Again, going back, what is it that we want to achieve as a company? Once you understand that, then you know the direction that the ball needs to go, right? So... In the bowling alley example, what we want to achieve is the we want the, the ball to reach the bowling pins, right? So now we know that we got to move the ball in this direction to reach those pins. And then what we want to do is have boundaries to stay focused. Because what a lot of companies will do is they will have that direction, but they won't have clarity around how to get there. So in this case, in this example, the bowling alley or the bowling ball might steer to the right. It might steer to the left. And then in some cases where you don't have boundaries or you haven't created a way to keep centered, you'll actually go into the gutter. And in that case, it could be 
your business goes under or you have to lay people off. But in our example, what we want you to do is add the gutter guards, right? The gutter guards that the kids use. If the ball strays too far to the right, it's going to course correct itself. If the ball goes too far to the left, it's going to course correct itself. That's how you create boundaries and you create ways to keep centered. So if we go back to the OKR example or using the pillars, that's how we create those boundaries. We clearly identify what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And then we break those down into the tasks that we have to conduct and complete to continue to move forward. And then if anything questionable comes up, that gives anybody in the organization the opportunity to say, no, I can't do that because that does not move us in the direction that we're trying to accomplish as a company. And you'll have to build that culture around that. And we help with that as well. But what you'll see is it gives people who are even afraid of conflict the autonomy and the confidence to say no to other people. And you're not being rude because you're ultimately saying, I have a goal and the company has a goal that are that's very aligned. And if I do this over here, that's outside of this lane, then it's not going to be any, it's not going to be beneficial to anyone. So, but at the end of this, with the gutter guards, the boundaries, the ways to keep center and starting with the end in sight, you are able to reach your goals. And again, a business coach is always going to help you with this because if you can't hold yourself accountable, then they're there to help you do that or your team or both. So I kind of just want to end this with a little bit of why you should listen to me. Uh, most people do this at the beginning, but I didn't want you to just skip this video without getting the benefit out of it first. But I do have my executive MBA from Strayer University. I have my Lean Six Sigma, which is focused on process design and development. I'm an OKR practitioner, and I've been featured in Lattice, which is the Resources for Humans. In that special, the keynote was Adam Grant and Serena Williams. So I hope that gives me a little bit of credit, uh, credibility there. But if you are looking for a business coach, and you want to work together in building the best year that you can have for your business, please reach out to me. You can see my contact on the screen here. You can reach out to me at zwright at imeoconsulting.com, or you can just check us out at the website at imeocompany.com. But thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to see any more topics on this or a deeper dive, feel free to drop something in the comments or reach out to me directly. See you on the next video.